myself went out shopping for their charitable uh, ministry event uh, yesterday, and we were standing in line waiting to pay, and, and, and the lady was scanning stuff through it, and this baby just kept making noise behind us, and, and it just sounded like baby noise, but, but I heard the baby say something that every believer ought to know, and the baby was mumbling and jumbling, but I
touch, forgive, open up deaf ears and blinded eyes. In the name of Jesus, we ask that you bless it. Amen. 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 And amen. amen. Luke 1, 39 through 45 deals with the conception of Christ Jesus. In the spirit of Christmas, in the spirit of Christ's birth, we we're, we're looking at the, the book of Luke. Upon uh, uh, this point in the, in, in the book of Luke, the people of God were waiting for God to do what God said he would do. How many people still waiting on God to do what he said he's going to do? Right. Amen. God has made you a promise, yes. and you may be waiting on it. Isaiah prophesied in Isaiah 7 and 14. He says, therefore, the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a, a virgin, a, a woman of marital age shall conceive. I'm saying that on purpose so you know what the, the translation is in, in the Hebrew. A woman of marital age shall conceive and bear a son and, and shall call his name Emmanuel. Don't get caught up on that I instead of that E. That's just right. different between Hebrew and Greek. Uh, I, Emmanuel. So God's people were waiting for God to do what he said he would do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They were waiting on a sign. And it is uh, in the book of Luke we find the conception of our Savior. Mary has been filled uh, with the Holy Ghost that gave, that's, that, that gave the conception of Christ Jesus in her womb. It is in the book of Luke we find a glimpse of what God said he was going to do. It is in the book of Luke we find Gabriel giving news of uh, John's uh, conception and John's birth and John's uh, ministry. It is in the book of Luke we find God paving a way to bless his children. It is in the book of Luke we find a faithful couple well past birth and age uh, giving birth to a baby that should pave the way for Christ, that being Zacharias and Elizabeth. It is in the book of Luke we find Mary, a young woman of marital age, who who has not known her husband. It is in the book of Luke we find a fiancé named Joseph who had not known his soon-to-be wife. It is in the book of Luke we find a pregnant virgin meeting her mother past her years of conception. It is in the book of Luke we, we find two conceptions that the worldly mind just can't think of, they can't find them. To them, it is impossible. It is in the book of Luke we find that God is doing actually what he said he was going to do. God is doing the impossible. Man, that should have been some shout news right yes. there. Anybody need God to do the impossible in their life? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You find it hard to put your cell phone down in service because you're sitting in the back of the church and you don't think pastor see you while you're preaching? Yeah, yeah. Call on God. He'll help you. Put it down. Don't look at each other. I caught you. Hey, amen. Amen. God specializes in doing the impossible. Point one. God notifies all parties. All right, you, you think God just gave you a promise, but, but, but God sends a messenger to pave the way. Yeah, yeah. God, 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 God puts people in position for, for, for them to bless you. They pave your way. You think you can't afford a car? God put that special finance person right there. And because you don't show up, you miss out on your blessing. God notifies all parties. In, in Isaiah 7 and 14, God used Isaiah to prophesy to Ahaz and the rest of the world at that time. In the book of Luke, the angel tells Zechariah what God was going to do and that God, what God is doing. In the book of Luke, Gabriel tells Mary what God is going to do and what God is doing. In the Matthew, the angel tells Joseph what God is doing to his wife, what God is going to do for the world. God lets those know what he would do and God does what he says he would do. Amen? Amen. There are times when, when man is not sure he will be able to do what he says, right? Right? We're not sure. When we say things like, well, don't tell nobody. Uh, we, we say things like, let's keep it between you and I. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, or the other, I'll I try. I, I try my best, but, but don't say nothing. Man has fear of failure. Man has fear of being viewed as a failure, but, but God is not like man. God is not like that. God does what he said he would do. Right. You don't believe me? 
number says that God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. He has right. said and he shall uh, not do it, or has he spoken and, and he should not make it good? God will do it. God yes. will make it good. Yes. Titus yes. says in yes. hope of eternal life. When it comes to salvation, which God that cannot lie promised before the world, God will do it. Hebrews 6 says that, that there are two immutable things, the things that, that's going to come, in which it is impossible for God to lie. We might have a strong consolation in him. Those two things that we should find in God, and when we find in God that if we flee, if we flee trouble, God will be our yes. refuge. Yes. There's no secret, or, or someone should have shot it right there. <laughs> what are you talking about, brother preacher? Just like God has made his children a promise in the Old Testament, God didn't forget about it. It came true in the New Testament. God has promised us some things, and, and God has not forgotten what he promised. Y'all should have shot it right there. God has promised someone here a job. Yeah, yeah, but God, you may not have it yet, but God has not forgotten what he promised. God has promised someone, I don't know who this is for, but God has promised someone in here a car. God has not forgotten. God has promised someone that he'll be a healer. God has not forgotten that he'll be a healer. God has promised someone in here restoration. God will give you back everything that the devil has took away from you. God has not forgotten what he has promised. God has made what he said known to all. Matter of fact, the songwriter testifies, the songwriter said the chimes of time ring out the news another day through. Someone slipped and fell, and that someone might be you. You may have longed for added strength, your courage to renew. Do not be in this disheartened, for I bring hope to you. There is no secret what God can do. What he done for others, God will do it. He'll do it for you. He'll do it for you. Don't think that, that, that just because God bless your neighbor that, 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 that your neighbor is all good and perfect with God. God will do the same thing. Yes, 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 yes. Point two. When we see God working, when we see God working, uh, being so close to Christmas, we, we, we being so close to Christmas morning, by now many of us see presents under the trees. We see the lights flashing all down the highways and special sections downtown. We see the light flashing on the houses. We see the lights flashing inside the houses. We even see uh, uh, parents wrapping gifts and the smart ones. Uh, yeah, yeah, they're on their best behavior. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When, when I was young, I, when I saw my parents wrapping gifts, I, and I snuck in there, I'm looking all under the door. And, Making sure I can see they trying to get a glimpse of when I see that, that wrapping paper hit the floor. You know, they cutting them ribbons and things. I, you couldn't beat me on my best behavior. <laughs> yeah, I did everything right. I, I, I did everything I was supposed to be doing. Amen. Yeah, the small ones, they on their best behavior. We see things, and, and, and we, when we process these things as, as blessings, Waiting to happen. We, we couldn't wait for Jesus. Christmas more. Amen. This same feeling uh, with the conception of Christ ha ha has come over Mary. This, this same feeling uh, of the conception of Christ has come over her cousin Elizabeth. This same feeling even came over a, a, a babe in, in her womb named John the Baptist. While he was in his mother's womb, the Holy Spirit leaped from yes. him and jumped on his mother. This excitement, this, this, this blessing that we're waiting to happen, the same uh, excitement uh, the child had on Christmas Eve night. Can't wait to Christmas morning. Jesus. Can't wait to be blessed. Can't wait to open and see how God uh, or their parents are going to bless them. We should have that same excitement. Yes. Luke 1, 39 through 41 says that Mary arose in those days and went into the hill country. Uh, with hey, she was running after the angel told her what was going to happen into a city uh, of Judah and entered into the house of her uh, 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 cousin named Elizabeth and saluted Elizabeth. And it came to pass that when Elizabeth heard Mary call her name, Jesus. that baby in her womb leaped and Jesus. Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ghost. That same feeling came upon them. Although Jesus wasn't born yet, 
they saw God working. Right. Although Jesus wasn't born yet, they felt God working. Although Jesus wasn't born yet, they heard God. Well, it was a baby in her womb. All right. Some folks won't believe a thing until it happens. Amen. Some folks won't believe a thing until it hits them in the face. Amen. Some folks won't believe a thing until it reaches their address, until it enters their home, until it reaches uh, uh, their doorstep, until it uh, creeps in through it. Some people just won't believe until they believe. All right. We shouldn't be that way. We shouldn't be like the unbeliever. We shouldn't uh, be like the world. Uh, we shouldn't be that way when it comes to God's promises. Yeah. We, should, we should just believe that thing that, that, that God said he would do as if it was already done. Yeah. It, it, ain't, it ain't something you, you grow to do overnight. It ain't, ain't something that happened overnight. It's something that you got to be seasoned and talking to the good Lord and having the Lord pull you through a couple right. of things and then that switch will turn and you know without a shadow of doubt when he said he'll be your protector yeah. and you need protection. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You walking like it's already we should walk and talk as if that thing God promised has already happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, 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 that should have been some shot news right there for somebody. Somebody should have stood up dancing. Somebody should have stood up and started praising right then and there. Yeah, yeah. When God allows us to see what he is doing, just a glimpse of what God is doing for us in our life is worth every kind of now, now, I don't know what God has promised you. And you might not know what God has promised me. But the Bible which we read and should be reading declares God has promised you and I uh, some things. Amen. Psalm says the Lord is good to all and he, he, he promises compassion on all he has made. Chronicles says we give thanks to the Lord for the Lord is good and he, and he, he loves us. He promised to love us. Uh, forever. Psalms 100 said, For the Lord is good and, and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all yes, generations. Yes, yes. Second Samuel says, Sovereign Lord, you are God. He's God all by himself. And he has a covenant that is we can trust in him. And, and you have promised these good things to your servant. Nahum says, The Lord is good and God will promise us be our refuge in the time of, of, of trouble. Yeah. Psalm says, for the Lord is good, and he is a, a son and a shield. The Lord bestows favor and honor to us. He promises that no good thing uh, that's out there that he'll keep away from those who walk blameless. Amen. You got to live a certain way. You got to talk a certain way. You got to walk a certain way. Isaiah says he gives strength to the weary and increases the power. God has made us some promises. Isaiah said, but those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings of evil. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and will not thank God makes us some promises. Isaiah says, when you pass through waters, God will be with you. Isaiah says, when you, you pass through rivers, God will make sure they won't sweep you away. Isaiah said, when you walk through fire, the fire won't, won't burn you. The flames won't consume you because God promises he will be there. Jeremiah puts it plain. He said, God already knows what he got plans for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He plans and he promises that he will prosper you. He plans that uh, no harm will come to you. He plans to give you hope and he plans to give you a future. I, I like that. God, God already knows. I, I'm trying to figure it out. God already worked it out. I'm trying to, trying to understand what you want me to be in this mean world. Lord, but thank God you figured it out already. All I got to do is walk. Yeah, the Lord himself goes before you and, and he will be with you. He'll never leave you. And he promised he'll never uh, forsake you. We don't have to be afraid. We don't have to be discouraged. God made us some promises. Matthew 6 says, yeah, don't, don't worry about what you should say. Yeah, Matthew 6 says, don't worry about what you shall eat. Matthew 6, don't worry about when you get thirsty, what you shall drink. Matthew 6, don't worry about Dolce and Cabana. Don't worry about guests. What's some of them new expensive ones I can't pronounce? All them fancy clothes. 
Don't worry about uh, wearing champion sweatsuits, young people. God said, don't worry about all that stuff. So he says he promises he knows what you in need of. Yeah, 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 yeah. He said, all you got to do is seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness and all these things that the world worried about. Yeah, yeah, we added unto you. Proverbs said, trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not to your own understanding. All your ways uh, uh, submit unto him and God will direct your path. Matthew 7 said, what are you? If you had a son ask for bread, would give him a rock. What are you? Uh, if had a son, if he asked for fish, would give him a snake. If then you have evil thoughts and you're evil unto the world and the unbeliever give good things to their children, what do you think your God, who oh, the cattle on the thousand hills, will do for you? When you need healing, God will heal you. When you need a comforter, he'll be a comforter. When you need somebody to love you, he'll rock you in his arms. God, God has made us some promises, brothers and sisters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He commands us in Matthew 11, say, if you're weary, then you're burdened down. He will give us rest. If you, if you take your yoke, his yoke upon him, yeah, yeah, his yoke is easy and his burdens is light. Yeah, yeah. John says he is the light of the world. And he promises that if we follow him, we will not walk in darkness. We will be children of the light. Mark says, therefore, I tell you, whatsoever you ask in prayer, believe, that you receive it and God will. Yes. He's gonna bless you. He's gonna bless you. Do I got a witness? Yeah, yeah. Son says, take the light in the Lord. Yeah, and he will give you the desires of your heart. John 14 says, and I will do whatever you ask in my name. In the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. Every tongue shall confess. When we see God working, we should be shouting. We should be praising. When we see God working, we, we, we should be worshiping. God is still in the blessing business. Yeah, 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 yeah. He gives us a glimpse of what he's doing. And Mary and Elizabeth and John, not even being born yet, saw a glimpse of what God would do for them and for everyone that's coming behind him. Point three, point three, point three. God is not through with his blessing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You might want to turn to your neighbor and say a few things about that. Especially if, 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 if they don't like you, you know they don't like you, scoot over next to them. And look them there in the eye and tell them God is not through blessing me yet. Yeah, yeah. You, you, you might not like it, <laughs> but I love it. <laughs> God is not through blessing me yet, even though God makes promises, even though God allows us to see him working on our behalf, even though God allows us to see him moving on our behalf, God is not finished a uh, uh, blessing of uh, me yet. My cup runs over. <laughs> it ain't ran over yet. Tell him it ain't got the counter wet. Yeah, my cup ain't got the table yet. Yeah, yeah, he's filling me up right now. He's filling me up right now. But when my cup run over, he said never ain't going to like it. Does anyone in here share a testimony that God keeps on blessing them? Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't want to walk down too many people's street, but but God has taken you from a place to stay to a house of your own. Anyone in here say God bless them like that? God's taking you from a ride to work to a car of your own. God is taking you from a lunch sack to ordering off the menu. God is taking you from a, a receiver to a giver. God is taking you from hoping to having. God is taking you from a pair of pants to a couple of suits. God is taking you from a pair of shoes to gator shoes and match the color of your brand new suit. God is taking you from used to buying new. God is taking you from bad health to good health. God is taking you from doubt to doing. God is taking you from loneliness to loveliness. God is taking you from shed clothes to a car closet full. God is through blessing me out. Yeah, 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 yeah. I remember I prayed as a little child. I'm Lord, I'm tired of sharing clothes with Bobby. Bobby's hard on clothes. I get fussed at. I have my clothes ironed and ready, and my brother sneak in there and put them on. I can iron these clothes. I'm tired of sharing clothes with him. I'm tired. I remember when I was 13 years old, I walked in my room and I looked in my clothes. On my half of the clothes. Yeah, 
say, yeah, and I saw uh, 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 a pair of pants for each day of the week. I said, wait a minute. And, and I'm 13 years old now, and I saw a shirt uh, for each day of the week. Yeah, yeah, my, my daddy had my uncle coming over from San Antonio, and I said, I'm going to put on a fashion show. I put on my first pair of pants and my shirt, and I walked in front of them, and they were talking in the room. Walked in the kitchen and came on out. That was that was what I was going to wear that Monday. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then I went back in the room, and I changed clothes, and I walked out what I was going to wear on Tuesday. Walked right through. And I walked right back in my room, and, and I put on a fashion show. I walked through Monday all the way to Sunday. They said, what's going on with him? Yeah, 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 yeah. Luke, Luke 6 says, Give, and it shall be given unto you in good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over. Shall men give into your bosom, for with the same measure that ye meet with all, it shall be measured to you again. I, I, can't, I can't forget the time when I was working my McDonald's job, and I was sweeping the outside patio. And a grown man came up to this 16, 17 year old boy and asked for something to eat. And I took him inside to give him what we had left over. And my manager said, no, we can't do that. I found out later that the homeless can sue if they get sick. So McDonald's said, no, you can't do that. That's the world we live in. Yeah, you, you can't fill the hungry with what you're throwing away because we feel lawsuits instead of the love of God and the wrath of God. And so I said, I'll pay for him. A burger. So I fired back up the grill and made him a fresh burger. Right. And I paid for it. Had my manager ring me up. And that man took that burger and he said, thank you. He said, when I get on my feet, I promise I'm coming back. All right. Well, a month went by. Four <laughs> months went by. Six months went by. Eight months went by. And I was on that same patio just a mop and swap, swap. And a man came up to me with some slacks and a button-down shirt. He didn't, look, he didn't look like he was living on the street. He said, hey, young man, here's some money. I thank you for feeding me. I said, what's going on here? He said, you fed me. And I didn't forget. I told you I was coming back. And it took my friend to make me remember who he was. He looked so God is good. Yeah. 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 Yeah
said, I never thought about it that way. And, and, and what happened, a young lady, a young couple came by, and, and I, I met with them, and, and the daddy called me, and the daddy said, uh, my daughter and, and, and her fiance want to buy that car, and uh, they moving too fast. I said, sir, uh, I can talk to them if you want. He said, huh? I said, I ain't no hurry to sell that car. And a man came by, he said, uh, well, make him wait till I get there. I said, okay. He said, I work on cars, I want to check it out for him. I said, okay, and they were ready to give me the money. I wasn't asking for a whole lot. I was asking way less than what it would be. Jesus. And the daddy got there, and we had just pulled back up in the car. I said, well, here you the keys, sir. You can go drive around. And, 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 and you know, you buy a car, you let it run for a while. You, you take it away from the owner. And if you're smart, you take a picture of the VIN number, and then you call the dealer, the, the manufacturer, and say, is any outstanding uh, recalls on this car? You know what I'm saying? And, 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 if the, and if the manufacturer say yes, then you get that car towed up to the dealership, get it fixed for free. Yeah, that, that, that's that. Y'all ain't know about that, huh? <laughs> you buy that car quick, and then you get it fixed for. Y'all, y'all, okay, y'all already knew that, okay, 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 so I let the car run for a little while, and the daddy show up, I want to show the father, and you can leave it running, you can dog it a little bit, it ain't gonna run hot on you, it's a good car, he took it around the corner, and he said, this is it, I said, okay, I said, now, young man, I'm gonna deal with you, I ain't gonna deal with your future wife, he looked at me, he said, uh, sir, uh, here's the money, I said, no, let's talk, I said, if you show up at Spring Hill, I knock an extra hundred dollars off. Jesus. The daddy heard it. He said, don't worry. They gonna be there. <laughs> Didn't they show up? Y'all yeah. remember them showing up? Yeah. And they still pop up from time to time. God is in the blessing Jesus. business. Turn to your neighbor and say, God ain't through blessing me yet. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Scoot to the other neighbor and say, hey, you might not like it, but God ain't through blessing me yet. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. God gonna give me more. And when I think he's done enough, he's gonna keep on making it good. Yeah. God ain't through blessing me yet. God is waiting for us to yes. continue on in faith. And God is saying, well done right now to, to us. Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I'll make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of the Lord. Yeah, yeah, well, God get happy with us. He just, I don't know what it is about praise and God being happy with it. You, he just keep on keeping on and he keep on blessing us. The conception of a savior. Jesus. Yeah, they happy. <laughs> Mary, Mary feels the child growing in her womb. Yeah, yeah. Jesus. Other people see God working by looking at Mary's baby and, and the joy that Mary had. Yeah, yeah, it filled the room and, and it touched the unborn baby in her cousin's womb. And her cousin felt the Holy Spirit leave. Jesus. You ought to be so happy that God keep blessing you yes. that the joy fill the room. Yes, yes. You ought to be so happy that the Lord blessing you that the Holy Spirit decides to say, what all, what's all that ruckus going on there at, at, at this address, at, at this church, in this hospital, in this doctor's office? What is all this ruckus going on? The Holy Spirit comes and, oh, yeah, they have <laughs> yes, Talk last week on... On, 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 on the Savior, the expectation of a Savior. We're expecting the Savior come. And then we talked this week about the conception. God has started that thing that he said he was going to do. Yes. Amen. That's what we have. Yes. Closer to the what we recognize as a birth of Christ. We, we recognize the conception. God has started to do Jesus. what he said. Yes. He was going to do. The Holy Spirit is in this place. I feel it. I don't do this often, but I said it last week, and I don't know if anybody caught it, but when, when you feel the Holy Spirit moving, just start asking. Just open your
your mouth and whatever the Holy Spirit yes. fills your mouth and your ears to say, just speak it. You can speak it in a whisper. Right. Yes. You ain't got to speak it where. Just speak it in your mind. Lord, my family. Lord, my, my church member. Lord, my neighbor. Lord, my child. Lord, my help. When the Holy Spirit is moved, yes. speak. Yes. Ask, it shall be given unto you. Yes. Seek, and you shall find. Knock and the doors shall be open. The doors of the church are open right now. Somebody might not know the Lord and the partner of their sin. We ask that you come right now. Someone's been asking for the Lord to forgive them for some awful thing. Guess what? You are forgiven. On the way over here, you forgave that car that cut you off. You forgiven. Gave that loved one that did you wrong, you are forgiven. Heaven rejoices when we come uh, to the altar to repent. Will you come? Will you come? Will you come? It was our yes. privilege to extend you, Lord. up to you to accept or reject. Our prayer is that Spring Hill that God keeps you and gives you another chance. Amen.
Heavenly Father, we come thanking you, Lord, for you, Lord. the visitation of your Holy Spirit. Those things, Holy Spirit, that we ask while you were moving within the walls of this down your church, Father God, that we ask that you honor and you bless them. We, we left them uh, as petitions on your altar. We left them at your feet, Jesus. We know you have the power to answer each and every one of them. No matter how far-fetched they were, Lord, we know that you have the power. Honor those prayers, Father God, for ourselves and our family, Lord. Protect us as we go back to our respective destinations. We thank you for what, what our ears have heard and, and what our eyes have seen and our hearts have felt. We thank you, Lord, for it. Every hand shaking up. We thank you for our church members and our church family and our family ourselves, Lord. Yes. Protect us, Lord. Keep us from hurt, harm, and danger. Yes. And allow us to bask in what we feel in our heart right now. That feeling of praise, that feeling of worship throughout the rest of the day. And if it be your will throughout the rest of the week, Father God. These things we ask in your son, son of Jesus' name. And may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the sweet communion of his Holy Spirit rest and rules uh, with us henceforth and forevermore. And may spring hills say. Amen.